Hey you all, and good morning. Got a good night's sleep here at south of the border, but there's no time to dilly-dally. We gotta hit that long, lonesome road. Follow me. In case you were wondering, why is it called South of the Border? The whole uh, name is predicated on the fact that it sits right below the North Carolina state line in South Carolina. So, therefore it is south of the North Carolina state line. Stopped off in Fayetteville, North Carolina here in this little shopping center. And look at this. They got their own Eiffel Tower. No reason to go to France when you can come to Fayetteville, North Carolina and uh, visit there. Eiffel Tower. I do think the real one is a little bit bigger. So there's a museum I wanted to check out here at Fort Bragg, but if you're not military, you do have to check in here at the uh, visitor center. All right, coming up on the Fort Bragg visitor center here where we have to check in. Okay, so went into the visitor center, showed them my driver's license and my vehicle registration, and I got a visitor pass to visit Fort Bragg. So I actually go into the fort and visit the museum. I am surprised they let me in with that driver. That's my driver's license photo. <laughs> I'm surprised they let me in with, with a driver's license photo like that. And this is what I wanted to check out, the JFK Special Warfare Museum. And here we are. We have this uh, soldier here handed out masks. Masks are required and he's generous enough to and one out. It's very unique items and weapons in this case. See that retractable baton right there? These are cal drops. I guess you drop them on the road and they will pop any tires. Okay, I think this is the craziest gun I've ever seen. You have the gun is mounted onto the top of a glove and it's meant to be used at close range. So you see that like trigger right there. So basically, you punch someone, and then that hits the trigger, and it shoots a bullet into them. So it's a punch gun. You punch someone and shoot them at the same time. Whoever thought such a thing could ever be possible? I don't know. I'm fascinated. This is a small crossbow that was created in order to be a completely silent weapon. That giant dart that it fires. There is a... A uh, camera hidden inside a box of matches there. Now there is a specific type of capsule that is for in case you get captured and they're torturing you and you need to not be able to be interviewed and never ever ever want to be interviewed ever again then you just take that little capsule and uh, it makes that uh, situation go away. A lot of weapons here in this museum that you wouldn't see in uh, most military museums. You can see that as a Chris, a jagged sword. Interesting. See, I was initially confused by the name, the Special Warfare Museum, but apparently Special Warfare is just simply warfare that doesn't fit into the traditional um, idea of what fighting a war is. 
So it's uh, where we get creative with our uh, warring. This is Bobby Mobley. He was the first African American to join the National Guard. Now that missile looking thing there says the love of Cywar, and this is really fascinating. This missile would be used to drop leaflets and propaganda. So yeah, it'd open up and the leaflets would come out. So basically, yeah, a missile it does not it does not physically harm people, but it uses psychological warfare drops. Yeah, you'd see the little pamphlets that would tell people that things would be better if they let the Americans win. And there's a speaker where they could give auditory psi war messages. So basically trying to uh, reason with people on a very large scale. Oh, here we have a big old chunk of the Berlin Wall. The OSS Maritime Unit. See some of the scuba gear there. And we can see the scuba soldier there traveling through the sea. Here's an exhibit on Grenada. See that guy? He's got a cigar right there. And a big poofy mustache. This suit and briefcase was used by an agent during the Iran uh, hostage crisis to uh, sneak into Iran and go undercover. Oh, watch out. Look up above. It's the Operation Desert Storm exhibit. You can see the American soldiers there. But look over here. This is pretty this is pretty amusing. This is a Iraqi soldier being showered with American propaganda. <laughs> you can see all the little leaflets written in Arabic. He's getting so many pamphlets, they're just raining down on him. Complete uh, shower of pamphlets. Now these are special US training operations. Uh, where they work to defend a country called Pineland. There's some information on Pineland there. Apparently Pineland is a completely fictional country. Oh, you can see it on the map there. And it is used in these uh, exercises. But apparently they go to great depths to make uh, the situation real. You can see there's Pineland money. They actually have the, the uh, Monopoly-like money there as uh, these soldiers work to uh, defend Pineland. This soldier here, for some reason, is carrying a rubber chicken. Man, Pineland is crazy. Here's some information on 9-11. Uh, there was a hat worn by the New York Police Department uh, during the uh, immediate cleanup. That's a piece of wood recovered uh, from the World Trade Center wreck site. Oh wow, this is pretty ominous. This is a placard pulled from the wreckage of the uh, World Trade Center. And what it says, it says, Notice the sound of the warble tone alarm indicates that a fire alarm or other emergency is in progress. Go to center corridor and wait for their instructions. These are humanitarian daily rations. There's some food that was dropped on uh, Afghanistan to the citizens uh, during the Afghani war. If you look at that, it says uh, a food gift from the people of the United States of America. So, you know, a, a, a kind thing to do, but also has, you know, a, a motivation to it to help uh, win the hearts and minds of the people. So they actually... Uh, drop leaflets too, telling people how to take advantage of the um, the food that was being dropped, and they would actually distribute radios too to help people uh, stay informed on uh, where they could get food, and you know you feed people, and uh, you know they might be a little more friendly towards you. Part of the museum still uh, under construction. You can see the figures laid out there on the tables. In this case, we have items taken from the Hussein family during the Iraqi war. This is a mur mural of Saddam Hussein that was taken. These are gold-plated weapons that belong to 
Uday Hussein, one of Saddam's son. And there's uh, a statue that was toppled of Uday Hussein. Uday Hussein, obviously Saddam Hussein, a very evil, psychotic dictator, but apparently his sons were even worse in some ways. Had beaten people to death at private events. Says that he uh, beat his father's personal aide to death after he was told he would not be Saddam's successor. Yeah, it looks like there's a lot of work going on to create new exhibits. Here's the POW room in here. You see the bamboo cages that American POWs were placed in, the terrible conditions. Colonel James Rowe here was a POW. Some of the items he saved from his time as a POW. A razor, a brush there, tiny playing cards. And during the Vietnam War, some POWs were placed in these horrible things. Apparently, this is a pit, a pit that would be built in the ground like a well, and then have the bamboo cage put on top, and they'd be forced to live down in that well-like area. That is almost unbelievably horrifying. And this was the main reason I actually stopped by here. We have Barney the Sun Bear. See Barney the taxidermied bear there. Apparently, he was uh, the Special Forces Unit found him in uh, Vietnam, and he was became their mascot. They all loved Barney the Bear. They adopted him, <laughs> so a bear was just playing with a bunch of soldiers, <laughs> and uh, they loved Barney so much they actually got permission to bring him back to North Carolina where he lived here at Fort Bragg for two years before he got pneumonia and passed away and then he was uh, taxidermied and brought over here to the museum. So what an adorable, there's a lot of horror in this museum but that is an adorable story. So wow, the JFK Special Warfare Museum. Now honestly, I often um, am hesitant about going to military museums because often they're a little dry, just a lot of uh, guns and uh, military items like that. Uh, I did come here to see Barney the Bear because I'm a big fan of famed taxidermy, uh, famous animals that were taxidermied. Um, but I must say, this is a really great museum. This is really well done. Um, I love the dis displays are done really interesting. Uh, great use of the uh, mannequins. And uh, the, the subject matter is very interesting. Um, yeah, I, didn't, I, I guess I didn't click what type of military museum is but the the uh what is it the special warfare the the interesting items the different unique strategies almost the in a way it's almost like the oddities museum of military museum so i'm very great i highly recommend this to anyone in the fort bragg uh we're visiting the fort bragg area here in north carolina um like i said i, I think i put it off a little bit because i was a little, a little worried about any time where you have to like log into a military base in order to visit but you know the, the login process wasn't it wasn't painful and uh museum was really great that over there there's a wood carving of jack skellington there's another cool carving on the same property here that's venom look at his long creepy tongue and we are in pikeville north carolina out here in front of Benton and Sons fabrication and look at what they've fabricated. We have these giant steel dinosaur skeletons. Look over here we got a Brachiosaurus. Let's check out that massive T-Rex there overlooking the highway. Thank you. 
these little butterflies and dragonflies are actually nailed down here to the uh, to the picnic table. I guess so no one runs off with them. And they have these little mini dinos and butterflies and pigs out here for sale. And then we got the frill version of the Dilophosaurus there. See, he's got that frill fanned out. Looks like they're all the dinosaurs here are covered in Christmas lights. I guess they light up at night. Dun 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 dun. Big metal crab surrounded by little other pieces of metal sea life. Here in Kenley, North Carolina, I stopped off at Donnie's Corvette Specialists. See, there's some Corvettes over there, but I didn't come to see these Corvettes. I came to visit this guy right here. Now, this guy was known as the goon in a top hat. It's a strange character here, but he's actually a repurposed Tasty Twin who were the mascots of the Tasty Freeze franchise. And he's actually one of only three known to exist. There's this one up here on the roof. There's one in a private backyard somewhere else in North Carolina. And then uh, my friend Jeff with Vintage Roadside uh, owns the third one. In 2016, my friend Jeff with Vintage Roadsides located uh, one of the twins. There's two, there's two Tasty Freeze twins, T and F. He located an F at a statuary in South Carolina. He lives out in the Pacific Northwest, so I uh, drove out there and, and brokered the deal, sealed the deal, got uh, F in the back of my minivan at the time, and brought him to UPS to be shipped off to the West Coast, where he was later uh, painted, refurbished, and actually got a chance to go out there and visit F after his rehab. Now this one here, I don't know if that is a T or an F, I forget, um, but it used to be up here. It used to look a lot rougher. It had no paint on it, but it had the top hat. And it vanished. I heard I think it maybe have blown off the roof. People didn't know what happened to it. And then it was reborn in this. Uh, and it was all painted up nice. It looks very dapper up there with his top hat. Oh, I, I really think he looks good. Is it, isn't, he, isn't he the greatest? Stopped off here at Rocky Mount, North Carolina, here at Leon Parker's Signs and Graphics, where they restore old signs. But check out what else they restored over here. We have Yogi Bear, Boo Boo, and Ranger Smith. These are figures from the old uh, Yogi Bear chicken chain. I believe there's one Yogi Bear chicken left in existence somewhere in North Carolina. But uh, yeah, these are restored fiberglass figures from that chain. You can see Yogi there gobbling down on that chicken leg. His skittish little friend, Boo Boo, taking off running. And Ranger Smith <laughs> coming after Yogi here. Normally he'd be mad because Yogi's stealing picnic baskets, but apparently he's angry that Yogi stole a chicken leg. See a Paul Bunyan and Babe over there on that roof. Well, I'm not really sure what Babe has in his mouth there. Actually, it looks like a stick of dynamite, oddly enough. <laughs> We're here in this residential neighborhood in Littleton, North Carolina. We have a place I've been wanting to visit for some time. You notice Mr. Sasquatch right there. This is the Cryptozoology and Paranormal Museum. And I don't know if it's open or not. I thought it was supposed to be open. Let's let's find out. Oh, they've moved to 300 North Main Street. Well, let's go over there. So it looks like the museum has moved from a residential home to a new location that's only about um, half a mile or so away. All right, let's try that again. Here we are at the Cryptozoology and Paranormal Museum here in Littleton, North Carolina. All right.
right, here we are. We got massive Sasquatch there. A little fuzzy Sasquatch in his hand. Now the owner, Stephen Barcello, is actually a commissioner here in Littleton, North Carolina. He said that uh, when he came to town, they did not want him to, to build the museum, so he ran for commissioner, and then uh, no one could stop him. And here's a North Carolina cryptid map. See the purple pins are Bigfoot sightings, and then blue is lake, river of monster sightings, green is miscellaneous cryptids. You can see a lot of Bigfoots here. This is the area we're at right now, and the owner was telling me that he started the museum here because it was a Bigfoot hot spot. So these ones here are copies. These are prints that are taken from you know famous Bigfoot locations. You can see the Honey Island Swamp Monster, which is that unique footprint up there. This is Willow Creek, Washington, Blue Mountains. Washington and then suspicious hair found off route 4 some unidentified hair in there and these are the uh, prints that are taken locally from Medoc Mountain State Park you can see very distinct footprints there and yeah, look at that you can see the individual toes and there is a uh, one found off Moore Street right here in Littleton and uh, Bigfoot hair right there. These are some skunk ape prints from the Everglades, Florida. And uh, it says there is a skunk ape hair sample that was given to this museum. Some aliens there. It's a smiley little guy. Here is a haunted hay crane. Someone... Uh, hung themselves with this in 1963 and then it sat in the family barn which apparently attracted tornadoes it says that uh, up to five tornadoes hit the property and of course it says that tornadoes are actually not common in this area so it almost seemed like it was a trap using the negative energy to draw tornadoes to the barn here we enter the haunted dolls section those dolls down there this is a Mrs. Beasley doll, said it was placed here because they, uh, it was in someone's home and continually moved around to different spots, reconfigured itself in different positions while left alone. See some different dolls here. It's a priest ventriloquist doll. Another ventriloquist dummy there. Looks like a monkey skull of some sort with beads through it. Some more dolls up there. Some shrunken heads and this is uh, talks about spirit photography. Here are some examples. See like a shadow figure sitting in the seat there. It's an example of a Dybbuk box. These are often used to trap evil spirits inside. These are the kind of boxes that you don't ever want to open. This rocking chair here doesn't have a sign by it, but it seems very ominous. This is, please do not sit, so I will refrain from sitting right there. No, they would come in in the morning and the thing would be rocking. Oh yeah? And uh, so they wanted to get rid of it. One of the women that worked in the antique store is a sensitive. She said she'd see a woman with a red dress associated with it. So we end up, they call us, we ask how we have for removing a lot of things. One of the women that works with us, Robin, uh, she's a manio, didn't know anything about it, came as we're still at the old museum. And I, anytime we have something new, she wants to come check it out. And she looks back, she's kind of standing back, I said, what do you get? And she goes, I see a woman in the city there with a red dress. I said she had no idea. So, so two, two different people identified it as having a woman in a red dress on it? Now, I don't have cameras all throughout yet. We're still working. I got one over there. I mean, we just moved in. We're still it's a work in progress. I didn't mean, stain this here. But the reason this is built up just to keep people from sitting on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the other museum was so tight. People, I go in there, they're always sitting on it. People were relaxing on it. Like, of course, one of my favorite creatures, the Fiji mermaid there. 
See, that's a this particular one has some shaggy hair. Self, you're not looking at the face on the clown. Okay. You're looking at the reflection, and the eye and the reflection will roll over and look at you, and a lot, sometimes it will actually grimace at you too. If you guys would like, or you got pay two bees, you're gonna mess around with. Okay, now this is the haunted sad clown. It said it was given to the um, museum here because it was placed in a guest bedroom at someone's home and that uh, it, uh, whoever slept in the bedroom would have nightmares, would wake up having night terrors, would be having uh, thoughts that they were dying when they woke up. So they decided to get rid of it. They did not like the negative energy. So they got it contained here in a box with some salt, some rosaries, and what they were saying, what the uh, the owner told me, is that you will look at the reflection of the clown over there to the right, and the eyes will move in the reflection specifically. So I don't know. We'll look here closely. Let's see, still very very creepy thought. Okay, I've got the focus there on just the reflection. Tell me if anyone thinks that looks like the eyes are moving. And they provided a K2 meter here so you can look for unusual energies. Let's see if uh, so we get over to the, the clown. It's not picking up anything at the moment. Let's see the K2 meter here on the chair. Yeah, it's not picking it. Not really picking anything up. Oh, saw a little little flash there. I don't know. Maybe no one's home right now. Let's try the haunted crane here. Oh, had a little flash there for a second. I don't know if the metal of the crane can affect it or not. Looks like in the back room there, they have a place where they can do um, palm readings, psychic readings. You can see over here, we have this painting of the child, and it is, uh, you see he's looking down. The reason the painting looks like this, it was actually based on, or painted on the image of the child in its coffin. So, the family apparently hung on to it for a while, but said that it just, uh, kind of gave them the creeps, because it is, in fact, a painting of a dead child. Selling some tarot cards here, and look at that, Miss Cleo. Tarot cards, that's pretty cool. See the museum here is actually partnered with MetaZoo, which is a, uh, a a card game in the vein of Magic the Gathering or Pokemon. And except the, the at least the first set is based on cryptids, because there's actually a Mothman card there. And apparently um, people that bought uh, early sets of this ended up making a lot of money because they are worth quite a bit right now. It's a little merch table here, some bumper stickers. They have uh, little tiny aliens and little mini tiny Sasquatches there. Look how tiny he is. <laughs> So talking to the owner, Stephen, he had come to this area a little to North Carolina and uh, he said he moved from New York and bought a big old house here. And he said that I guess he had no intention of starting a, a museum or an attraction based on cryptozoology or the paranormal, but he said that the house that he was in had some paranormal activity going on. And then he found out that this was a Bigfoot hotspot, which inspired him to want to create the uh, the local museum. Like I said, he uh, had to run and, and get elected county commissioner because the he said the local board did not initially want that attention, but he said it has become uh, more popular and embraced by the community now. And yeah, he said he was partnering with, with MetaZoo. Now, I had heard of this before. Um, these are... Like I said, these are like trading cards, a trading card game like Pokemon or or Magic the Gathering, but they use uh, 
uh, cryptids and and legends in the cards, which I found really amusing. He said I could grab these. Are like I think these are their commons. These are like cards that aren't worth any money, but he had uh, some extras that he was giving away. Uh, I picked I picked up some. These are a few that, that that I recognized. This is the the moon eyed people. I actually did a video about this a long, long time ago on the channel. There was a, a sculpture found at a museum somewhere in North Carolina, somewhere near where I live in Western North Carolina. They have, they found these carvings that looked very much like aliens. I did a video there. Oh, that's the Bunny Man. I did a video from Bunny Man Bridge as well. A, 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 a alleged psychotic escape man in a bunny suit that murders people at Bunny Man Bridge. And... Oh, this is the, it's called the this is a spell called the Crossroads. I got that because it has Mothman on it, and this is Anti Magic Field, and I got that because it has the Loveland Frogman on it, who is a, a a half man half frog that carries a magic wand for some reason. Oh, and then we got a we got a hoop snake. This is the, the legend out west where a snake that bites its own tail so that it can that it can uh, that it can roll. So uh, thank you guys for joining me today as we traveled across the state of North Carolina. I'm going to continue heading north. Um, appreciate you guys coming along with me. It means a lot that people continue to view these videos, following along with my ongoing adventures. And uh, please subscribe. It'll let you know when new videos come out. I try to do videos about every day. I do take some days off here and there. Um, if you'd like to support the channel further, consider donating to Patreon. $3 or more, we'll get you a postcard once a month. And uh, also have the uh, enamel pins. We have four different designs in the Etsy shop. That's in the description of this video. And um, all that helps keep this train on the tracks, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.